Thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring today's video. So many of you have probably seen Autopilot in the news lately. Unfortunately, horrible accident in Texas involving a 2019 Tesla Model S. And the cops who initially came on the scene, I think from what I read correctly, they said they're 99.9% .9 sure that there was no driver in the driver's seat during the crash. Horrible, we never wanna see that happen. But it seems that when a Tesla is involved in a crash, it makes the news more so than any other vehicle, mostly because of autopilot and full self-driving. Tesla is the front runner in vehicle autonomy, uh, even though they don't have a fully autonomous vehicle yet. As a Tesla owner myself, I've been driving with Tesla autopilot and Tesla full self-driving capability for over three years now, 75,000 miles, and I drive Tesla Autopilot and Tesla full self-driving capability up to 80 miles a day. And that's why I got the car in the first place because I knew I wanted to have a fully electric car and I, Tesla was the best electric car with over 300 miles of range. And of course the technology with Tesla Autopilot. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're in my Tesla Model 3 right now. And I'm gonna go over all the facts, all the fiction uh, and clear the slate for people who are unfamiliar with Tesla Autopilot, or even if you are familiar with Tesla and you just don't know much about Autopilot or the ins and outs of it, I wanna to try to clear up some confusion and separate the truth from lies. Sit back and enjoy the ride. The first thing I wanna do is obviously enable Autopilot by double tapping down on the right stalk. And now Autopilot is enabled. And what this is, is it is a level two driver assistance system. The car doesn't fully drive itself without your supervision. Autopilot is still technically in beta. So it's still a beta software and it requires a driver supervision and ready to take over at all times. And it requires a hand on the wheel at all times as well. You can actually take your hand off the wheel for a little bit, but it will alert you eventually after a certain amount of seconds to put your hand back on the wheel. And if you don't, it will completely disengage and you will have to take over. So I'm gonna show you sort of a cool feature of full self-driving is automatic lane change. I just enabled the turn signal and it, auto and it changed lanes automatically. Now. This other feature is part of the full self-driving capability, which we'll get into the differences between autopilot and full self-driving, because that's sort of a big confusion for people. It is automatically stopping by itself for the red light. Um, and it does that with full self-driving capability. I have full self-driving capability on this car. I paid a couple thousand dollars for it a few years ago. And with that, it gives you some additional features, but basically all new Teslas come with autopilot and what that is is it, it's traffic aware cruise control so when you enable cruise control it keeps the distance it keeps your speed it'll slow down for people in front of you and it also has auto steer on it as well so it keeps within the lane but it needs clearly marked lanes so the free basic autopilot that comes with all new teslas is just auto steer and traffic aware cruise control the full self-driving capability is where it gets a little confusing because the name, obviously it's called full self-driving capability. And I think Tesla was caught in a place where they had to name this something that would make people buy it and invest in it so they could do the research and development, the R&D, and develop this full self-driving capability over time because what they're doing is they're saying, hey, you can buy this full self-driving capability, which adds additional features to autopilot but it's not currently full autonomous self-driving, meaning you still have to have full supervision as a driver and ready to take over at all times. But when you tell that to a normal person, say your grandma, if you tell your grandma, say, hey, if I'm buying this feature called full self-driving, what do you think that means, grandma? She's probably gonna think like, oh, the car drives itself, right? Without having anybody in it. I think a good analogy is sort of like a wireless speaker, Bluetooth speaker. So I, I got a Bose, wireless speaker and that's kind of how they labeled it they said it's a wireless speaker and when you get a wireless speaker you kind of think it's like portable and completely wireless but this one is wireless in the terms of oh it plays music wirelessly but it still requires a cord to be plugged into power it's not battery powered so uh, i did a review about that and i got a lot of people saying hey this is not completely wireless why is it a wireless why do they call it a wireless speaker so you can actually look at that both ways like yes it's a wireless speaker but no, it's not a wireless speaker. So that's sort of like it is with full self-driving. Yes, it's called full self-driving capability and it's going to deliver that at some point, but not right now. And I can totally understand both sides of this, of people like chastising Tesla for naming it, oh, full self-driving when it's really not full autonomy. And then the other side saying, well, like when you look at it on their webpage, it says like, hey, this is still a feature that's in beta. 
Uh, it's not fully autonomous, meaning you still have to be in control. Uh, even when you enable the settings in the car itself, when you first get the car, you have to agree that this is not full, fully autonomous vehicle. You still have to have your hand on the wheel at all times. This is all just still really new. And Tesla had to have a way to charge for this feature in order to pay for the high cost of developing this uh, fully autonomous software and the, the neural network and the, the AI, the artificial intelligence that goes with developing a fully autonomous vehicle somewhere in the future. That's what their mission, they truly believe that they can do it. All the Tesla owners who are driving millions of miles, all this data is sent back to Tesla to finally be able to get that fully autonomous self-driving vehicle sometime in the future. Currently, Tesla says all their cars have the hardware that's capable of future full self-driving, fully autonomous vehicles because these cars come with a computer on board that is able to uh, process this data infinitely faster than previous computer chips and sends it back to, and all these all the Teslas are connected to uh, the internet through LTE, so all of this is connected and it sends data back, so they're building the environment. The way it works is it has eight cameras around the vehicle itself, eight exterior cameras for these Teslas. That paired along with 12 ultrasonic sensors and one forward-facing radar that makes up to be the hardware that allows the tesla to kind of produce this 360 degree environment when autopilot is enabled and the driver has to take over that's called an incident or a case and that data gets sent back to tesla why did the driver have to take over at this point in time what happened and they're training their computer they're building a supercomputer called dojo and it's going to be able to process this information like tons of information and it's going to be machine learning so instead of having a pre-programmed set of code this is going to actually learn itself and that's where the artificial intelligence comes in and that's when you know when tesla solves all that they're going to be able to exponentially improve their full self-driving capability as time goes on in my opinion i think we're at least at least five years away from any type of fully self-driving vehicle of being on the road without a human in it uh, and even in that case there are just so many different scenarios and edge cases that uh, it's going to have to solve because unfortunately you know with the with when anytime a crash happens and an autopilot is part of that if autopilot isn't able at all it's going to get picked up in the news it's happened in the past it's going to happen in the future the big question is is it ultimately safer for the car to drive compared to a human and the car needs to be at least as safe preferably safer than a human i will say after driving this car for three years over seventy-five thousand miles i trust autopilot wholeheartedly to the for the most part 99.9 percent .9%, i i could feel comfortable putting it on autopilot and not really worrying about a thing especially on highways and, and interstates in the city it's a different story it's not quite there yet they do have a full self-driving beta that's out to a limited number of uh, Tesla owners right now, and they're testing that out in the, in the wild. And that's going to be released to the public soon. So, to, so once they release it to all the Tesla owners, it's going to be able to sort of navigate on city streets. So it's going to be able to turn left at like traffic lights. It's going to be able to stop at stop signs and turn by itself in, city, in the city environment. But right now it's mostly uh, designed for long stretches of roads. Uh, but it's getting more advanced uh, as time goes by. So I use it all the time on the highway and I completely trust it. Now, speaking of safety, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Private Internet Access, which is my VPN of choice after doing a lot of research and knowing that it will keep me safe online. Private Internet Access is a simple to use VPN app for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and more. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and it's almost a necessity at this point when you're online. With private internet access, all your traffic goes through a secure tunnel, your IP address is hidden, and your data is encrypted. It's not only a great way to protect your identity and keep your data away from spammers and hackers, but it also comes in handy when you need to unblock certain geo-restricted content, like for example when streaming Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, and others. And private internet access is like the Tesla autopilot of VPNs. It's very fast and reliable with over 20,000 servers in over 70 countries and has a strict no logs policy. You can even use one subscription to protect up to 10 devices at the same time. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. So click the link below to try it out risk free for less than $3 a month. And you'll also get three extra months for free. Tesla autopilot has been extremely worth it. It's one of the best, quite possibly the best thing about owning a Tesla. It, it takes away a lot of fatigue for, for driving for long drives or my everyday commute, really. Uh, and you can just kind of like 
relax a little bit more. And uh, you know, even though I'm still paying attention, I got my hand on the wheel. I can, I don't have to worry about like keeping in the lane or or stopping if, if abruptly if somebody like in front of me is slowing down or things like that. It's just it works for the most part as long as you know what the system is capable of, what the limits are currently, because it's always improving. But it's still level two advanced driver assistance system. It's not fully autonomous level five and that's what they're trying to reach and it's only level two now so there's a way to go there's a long way to go but another thing is like does it require a driver in the seat well i can lift my whole body out of the seat as long as the seat belt is fastened i can lift my whole entire body out of the seat and autopilot still enabled uh, so they don't use the seat occupancy sensor that is uh, on is in these seats i thought it did but as long as the seat belt is fastened it doesn't really need anything or anybody or any weight in the seat. Well, I wonder if they will eventually change that in the future with a software update and require there to be at least some type of weight limit. Now, do I feel safe with autopilot? I 100% feel safer with autopilot than not with autopilot. With an older car, you could take any older car and put on regular cruise control and it would just go. Like you would have to stop it with uh, autopilot and it slows down, it slows down. Here's a curve coming up here. I completely trust it for curves. Uh, as long as there are lane markings, I completely trust it. Uh, another cool thing about Tesla Autopilot with the newer cars, and it's actually only on the Model 3 and Model Y, but it's coming to the Model S and Model X soon, is one more camera. So the Model 3 has an interior camera right up here. And they're actually using that right now for safety purposes. They're gathering data. If something happens, if a crash happens, they actually uh, take that data. If you allow it, there's a setting for you to allow that data to be captured. It actually uses that data for autopilot. It doesn't use it right now for autopilot, but there is a video of somebody gathering these data logs and it shows the camera identifying every single movement of the driver. It shows like, oh, driver looks to the right, driver looks to the left, driver has sunglasses on, driver looks down, uh, driver is facing forward. I mean, you can see all this stuff happening at uh, real time, and it's crazy how Tesla's already capturing that data with the with the camera. So that will be coming to play further on down the line. Okay, we're coming up on a sort of a back road, neighborhood road that doesn't have any lane lines. And we're gonna see if we're gonna be able to enable autopilot. So right now it's still saying we can. It's got that little steering wheel icon. Well, now the, the lane lines just disappeared and my autopilot icon is no longer there. So I can enable traffic aware cruise control, but I cannot enable autopilot. Still no option to enable autopilot. Still no lane lines. This road at least does confirm what Elon had said on Twitter about the autopilot needing lane lines. And it does. I mean, uh, once the lane lines disappear, then your ability to go on autopilot does go away and it won't come back until you are on a road with visible lane lines. I pride myself in you know being an objective reviewer on YouTube obviously I'm a big Tesla fan uh, and that's just because I, once I see a product and use a product and I know it works and it works well I will become a fan of that product and I usually become a fan of that company it's sort of like the same way with Apple I, I'm a big fan of Apple because I love their products it works well uh, for what I need to do but you know Apple is not perfect and Tesla is not perfect so I've been told by People in my, on my comments of my videos, I've been told that I'm a Tesla fanboy, and I've also been told that uh, I am a, a Tesla hater. I get it from both sides because I try to be honest. I, I will mention the faults or you know the limits of a Tesla product or you know whatever Tesla is doing based on my experience of with the car, with the product. Tesla does a ton of things right. Their technology is amazing. Their battery technology is amazing. But the company does struggle in certain areas, and. Um, I think, you know, the naming of the full self-driving capability, they were kind of forced themselves into a, a corner there. And I completely believe they had the best intentions. They were like, okay, we need to name this something that sparks an interest and, and gets people to buy it now. But but also, you know, we, we need to cover our ground and make sure we, you know, let them know in the fine print or, you know, when they're buying it or when they're enabling in the car that like, hey, you're still in control of the car. You need to be responsible, be a responsible driver, have full supervision of the car, keep your hand on the wheel. Uh, so they, they have done that, but I can see where a lot of people in the, in the public just, they see, oh, Tesla has a thing called full self-driving. Well, it must drive itself. It doesn't completely drive itself, still requires human driver, but it does work really well for what it is. A lot of people may not think it's worth it because the, the price has increased since I got mine. I think it's completely worth it from what I paid for it. I paid about $7,000 for it. 
when I got my car. So I paid $5,000 for enhanced autopilot plus $2,000 for full self-driving. So when I bought my Model 3, I never, my plan was to not buy full self-driving until it was actually here. I only bought enhanced autopilot. And when they offered it at that discount, they offered a special discount they got me just because I wanted to have it for my YouTube channel. I was like, well, I'd rather just pay $2,000 now to have it available and test out these features as they come along. And it's been great. You know, I don't, I don't really regret it. I'm glad I paid the $2,000. It's been great to have auto lane change. But, you know, with, with uh, the full self-driving capability, you're just getting a few features, extra features compared to autopilot right now. So if, if you're buying a new Tesla, I wouldn't worry about getting the full self-driving capability unless you absolutely want those automatic lane changes. Uh, because I think that is the most useful feature out of the full self-driving, but it's a lot of money for $10,000. Elon Musk said the price is going to go up uh, in the future. I think they are going to be coming out with a, a subscription model. Uh, so if you'd rather just wait and just pay a certain dollars per month, I would rather do that for if I was a normal person that didn't have a YouTube channel about Tesla. I would just wait and just use basic autopilot that comes with a car. And then later on down the line, you may not even have the, the, the car that you have right now. So uh, that's the dilemma for a lot of people. A lot of people are gonna buy the Tesla and if they buy the full self-driving capability, it does not transfer over with their new car. So you're kind of just stuck with that car and, and just and hoping that Tesla uh, releases a fully self-driving uh, autonomy uh, software <laughs> while you have that car. And that's kind of my outlook right now. That's my mindset. I plan to keep this Model 3 for at least 10 years. So I got seven more years to go. I'm hoping in seven years, I will be able to let my Tesla go out and just drive in the Tesla fleet, make some money. And I did a video about that if you wanna check that out. But for most people, buying a Tesla, just stick with the basic autopilot. I think you'll uh, benefit from that the most and save yourself some $10,000. As much as I drive, and as much as I have experienced how autopilot and full self-driving handle my driving and all the, the times and hours and hours and hours I've used it driving on road trips, on my daily driving, completely worth it. It makes the car safer, it makes me feel better. If my wife goes out to drive, I always say, hey, drive the Tesla, because I want her to be in the safest car. The autopilot just makes it that much safer, uh, but even without autopilot, it's still just a safe car to be in. It's the least probability of injury for any vehicle. So I definitely stand by Tesla and, and autopilot and full self-driving, but I, I, do, I do understand how people can be confused <laughs> by the name and by the certain features. So I expect to get flack from both sides. All I wanna see is progression. And I think Tesla is definitely trying to progress as fast as possible. And some people not, might not like the way they do it, but I, I think that uh, as long as we see progression, I think that's what their ultimate goal is. And, and I support that. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Thanks for driving along with me today. I just wanted to let you guys experience just a little drive with Tesla full self-driving in Louisville, Kentucky on the back roads. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring today's video.